Hello Facebook, Steve Woody here, Online Mastery, and today, Midday Mastery, episode number 17, and it's all about core offers. So today I'm going to take you through just a process. If you've been following my Facebook Lives so far, then you'll know that we've talked about opt-ins, we've talked about sales funnels, we've talked about why you're doing what you're doing, and so... Something that happened to me this morning is, it's a very exciting day for me today actually, it's the 1st of March, so uh, happy new month to everybody. Uh, I started my new um, I started my new course today, which is amazing, it's fantastic, so I've now got people that are going through my course, and one of the things that I talk about is that there's a, there's a six week course, because I've got six steps in place, and I kind of want to push that across here today into what I'm going to show you, because the course is really geared around understanding this process. Because if you understand this process, Rhett, hello, good to see you brother, thanks for joining in. Um, if you understand this process, it, it makes so much difference. Benjamin, hello, nice for you to see you. Nice to see you here, mate. Um, so what we've done is we've, we've talked about, when we go back to the basics, we had our opt-in and we talked about this video, okay? And the opt-in leads for a process. Now, this whole sales funnel that we're building out, there's no right or wrong answer. You have, to, you have to test this and figure out what works for you. But what ideally we spoke about yesterday was the, we, we, we talked about the opt-in and then we talked about when they go through the opt-in, they get to what's called the IPO. Some people call it a tripwire, some people call it um, you know, a, an MVP or a minimum viable product. I, I, mean, I call it the initial product offer. So this is the first product. So we've got the opt-in where we capture the name and email address. And then we have the IPO, which is the way that we first get them to turn from a subscriber into a customer. And then what we need to do is take them on a journey. And they want to ideally end up at your core offer. Now, what this is called, or what some people call this, is the ATC. Now, an ATC stands for Ascending Transaction Model. Can't spell <laughs> ATM. <laughs> ATM. Some people. I don't know why I said ATC. Something's in my head. Um, ATM is the ascending transaction model, and this some people like to call it the ATM, like a cash machine. But the idea behind this, having an ascending transaction model, is that you start off with a cheaper product, and then a more expensive one, and a more expensive one, and a more expensive one, and basically people go from one to the other to the other, and they go through this process. So this is what the ATM stands for. Um, Benjamin, Dill and I are all building language programs. You should all connect with each other. You should be in a group. You should all have a chat because if you guys are all together, like I, I often talk to a lot of my competitors. And the reason I do that is because I learn things from them and they learn things from me. And I'm not in this business just to make money. If I was in this business to make money, then I, would, I wouldn't be sharing all of this. I'd just be like, give me your money and then I'll teach you all of this. I wouldn't, if, if, if I was in this for money, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. It makes no sense. And so, I, I, there's no, like, I make my money and I do well in what I do now. So I'm comfortable and I'm confident enough. Like, I know there are people out there who I'm teaching things or I'm sharing things. And they're teaching it as it's their own. Like, I have things that are specific to what I do that no one else does because they're mine. I made them. And so I see people now, I see people delivering this in like group environments. I see people delivering this on stage. And I'm like, I'm sitting there and part of me is like, I taught you that. Or you got that from me. But I don't say it in like a, oh my God, you've taken my stuff. You're, you're, you're using my, like, do you know what? If someone can take what I've, what I've learned and they can use it and it helps them, then I'm here to help people. I'm here, you know, in whatever capacity that is. Um, I, I'm not worried about people stealing my stuff. I'm because at the end of the day, anybody. I, I said this to Jamie once when she she ended up um, filing uh, DMCA takedown orders against this guy that ripped off all the material. Now I'm not saying like if someone rips off your, all your course content and then repurposes it as their own, then that's just a dick, right? And this guy deserved to get screwed over for that. But in what I said to her, and, and I, I stand by this, is that anyone that steals from you or copies from you can only copy. They can only steal. So as long as you're creating, you'll always have that competitive advantage that you're creating. So as long as you're putting new stuff out there, then they'll only ever be able to copy you. They'll, they'll never be able to have what you have. And as soon as you stop creating, they have nothing left to copy. So I, I kind of, I really believe in just putting everything out there. 
And the thing is, I could give you all my knowledge, but let's be realistic. How many of you, and I mean this with love, are actually going to go away and implement this? Some people need a kick up the arse and some people need it done for them, right? So there's always a market. Even if you give all your information for, away, there's like knowledge, like knowledge without action is only potential power, right? It's the action that actually makes it like... That makes it work, like that, that puts a value on it. It's what you do with the knowledge. Like the knowledge on its own, is is it's not worth anything if if you don't apply it. So what I'm hoping to do here is give you this so that you can go away and apply it. So what we're talking about, we talked about the opt-in, we talked about the initial product offer, and today we're going to talk about the core offer. Now one of the things, and I, I want to keep this really simple for you because I don't feel like there's any need to overcomplicate it. I'm not going to pad for the sake of padding. When you're looking at your core offer, the whole purpose of what we're doing here and we talked about this before, is we're filtering people through a process, okay? And every time they go from stage one to stage two to stage three, down to your core offer, what we're basically doing to people here is saying, do you qualify? Yes. Do you qualify? Yes. Do you qualify? And we're asking that question, and if they don't qualify, then we have something here where they can, or we, we, can, like, we can refer them, we can refer people to work with other people, you know, I've got some, I've got some competitors of mine that I refer people to, especially the nightmare clients. Keep your friends closer, your enemies closer, right? There's a point where I, I, I just can't work with people, or I don't want to work with people, and and that's the beauty of what I do is I get to pick and choose. It's my business, right? I'm driving the boat. I get to say what I do, and so if there's someone I don't want to work with, I can say that I can't help you. However, you can go here or you can go there. And so the whole idea is this is a filter process because when someone gets to your core offer. The idea is that they're pre-qualified, they're ready for it. You do not want people, like some people come straight into your core offer, some people need to be warmed up to your core offer. And so people are going to come straight into it, great. Like every now and again, someone might just come to you, throw some money, like it, it happened to me recently. Um, one of my new clients that I've got, um, who may even be watching his Facebook Live, he, he watched a four minute rant video that I did. If you remember a while back, I did a four minute rant where I talked about um, people go into India and the Philippines to hire website developers to build a website. Um, but the problem is if you don't know what questions to ask and they don't ask the right questions either, you end up with a website that doesn't necessarily get you results. And it's not through any fault of you or the developer, it's just a lack of knowledge and lack of awareness. And so I did this little four minute round. He watched that, reached out to me and said we should have a chat. Turns out he was local to me, so I said, well why don't you pop over for a cup of tea and we'll have a chat. So he come over for a 20 minute chat to my house. We ended up talking for an hour and the first thing I said to him, and I posted about this the other day, and it was controversial, which is what's quite interesting, is the first thing I say to any potential client, if I'm looking at a one-on-one -on -one client, if I'm looking to work with someone, I don't build websites. All right? I'm, not, I'm not in the website game anymore. I mean, a website is a vehicle to me. You know, I, I, I like driving cars, but I don't build them. And so I like building websites for me, and I like using websites to get me to where I need to be, but it's a vehicle. It's the same for you in your business. right? If you've got a solution to a problem, then the website is a vehicle to deliver that solution and to fix that problem. But like when people come to me and say I need a website, I'm like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Let's have a look. Before we come in here and look at the website, let's just take a step above. Let's look at the business. Let's look at how the business is doing. Because look, if you haven't got a good business, doesn't matter what website you build. Your webs a website is not going to save a bad business. All right, if your business is fundamentally flawed, then all you're going to do is prolong. I mean, you may make some money, you may, you may give some short-term success, but if you want to build like a legacy or something sustainable and your business model's flawed, then it doesn't matter what you do in terms of a website, it's, it's not going to work long-term. And so it's really about taking a step back, and that's the first thing I do. That's why when I ask people, let's show me your balance sheet. It's not about me seeing a balance sheet. And this was an interesting co topic that popped up on my Facebook feed the other day. Some people were like, um, they, you could see there was some stuff there around it. But like, you're not meant to take everything I say literally. Not all of the time. I mean, especially if you know me, you know, a lot of my, what I say is quite satire. A lot of what I say, I say it for jokes because I like to have fun. But the reality is when I say things like, show me your balance sheet, that's not, I don't walk into a company and demand to see their balance sheet. And if they don't, I'm like, I'm not working with you because that make me a dick. I'm not like that. What I do is I say, show me your balance sheet because people don't expect it. And so when I turn around and say that, they're like, I thought we were going to talk about websites. Now we're talking about something different. It's the same as when I say to somebody, what do you want? And they tell me all the things they want for their website. And then I say, reality is, I don't care what you want. 
Now people get like quite taken back by that, but it's a state change. And what that allows me to do is say, I care about what your clients want. Tell me what they want. Because it, it interrupts their pattern. It gets them to start thinking about things in a different way. And sometimes you need to break those patterns. You need to get people to start thinking about things in a different way. And so what I do by asking for a balance sheet is I say, look, we're not in, I'm not interested in the website level. I'm not interested here. Let's take a step up and let's look at the business and let's look at the numbers and let's look at what we need to do here. Because here's the reality. When people come into your core offer, when you're looking at creating a core offer, you don't want everyone in here. That's not the purpose, that's not the outcome here, because if you end up with people in your core offer and they're not right for you, it's going to cost you that there's something worse than having no customers, and that is having the wrong customers. Okay, It is better to have no traffic than the wrong traffic, because if you get what I call a terrorist in here, it is going to cause you all sorts of grief and mayhem. So you do not want a terrorist in your core offer. You want to identify them early on and weed them out so that the people you get in here are the people you want to work with. The people I've started working with today are the people I want to work with. They're the people that I have, I have created this specifically for because I know it's going to give them the best uh, impact. I know it's going to give them the best results. I know it's going to look good for me. I know I'm going to enjoy working with them. And so the people I have in my course at the moment are the people I want to work with. Everybody else, I've got opt-ins, I've got IPOs, I've got other, other offers for them, other things for them to do. But my core offer, what I'm doing right now, it's specific. And so it should be, you, you know, your core offer shouldn't be for everybody. Your core offer should be targeted to a specific niche. Okay, you can have opt-ins, you can have initial product offers, you can have as many of these as you want that lead into the core offer, like different ways in, but ultimately, your core offer, if it is going to take your time, and for a lot of people it will, if it is going to take your time, then you have to be careful how much of your time you're going to give to how many people you're going to give it and what kind of people are going to get it as well. So what I wanted to talk about tomorrow, and I'm not going to go over it now, but we're going to talk about what's called OTO uh, and upsells. OTO means one-time offers, upsells. And we're going to talk about that. I'm not going to talk about it now. I'm going to talk about it tomorrow. But that would be the next step. Because we're always going to be asking, what's next? So it could be, I'm going to give you an example now. An opt-in might be, let's say you want to, we're going to reverse engineer this. We're going to work backwards. So let's say, in fact, give me an example. Some, in fact, we've got languages, haven't we? So why don't we use languages? So let's say, for example, your core offer, okay, as an example, is as a teacher who is teaching language, let's say your core offer is a six-week intense course of your time where you will go one-on-one um, -on -one with a client to get them from where they are to where they need to be. So maybe that their exam preparation, right? Let's, let's use exam prep as an example. So they've got an exam coming up and your core offer, your focus in your market is getting them ready for their exams. Okay, so this is the exam prep course guide, whatever it is, and it costs, I don't know, 1997, whatever it is, for six-week intense course for them to pass their, they're going to pass their exam because of it. Now, you might have the opt-in, maybe um, one way to instantly relieve stress before your exams. It could be three things you need to do before you take your exams. It could be the seven-step guide to <coughs> um, prepping for an exam. Like, you can have lots of different opt-ins. All right? It doesn't have to be one. You have to find what works. This is what I'm saying. There's no right or wrong answer. You look at what works in your opt-in and you test and you test and you test. And you say, actually, do you know what? This one works really well. People like this. Great. So this goes into a little mini course where you can have a series of videos or you might have uh, some documents or it might be that they get a call with you. It might be that you do a, a, an initial session with them. Whatever it is. Whatever. Uh, again, lots of different opt-ins. You test which one works. Lots of different IPOs, you test which one works best. And they lead into your core offer, which is your time. So it could be that you have a different course. It might be that you have an English speaking course. It might be that you have a different language course. It might be that you have a science course. It might be like you have a maths course. All right, there could be different IPOs for different courses. I was thinking parents train kids to do the homework. Core offer of me, 10 minutes for $50. 10 minutes for $50? So... Rhett, what I want to know, I'm going to ask you a question here, mate. A core offer. Like, if you were to say, this is the biggest and best thing that I have. This is everything. Because, like, 
10, what can I really, like realistically, what can I get with you for 10 minutes? Is 10 minutes with you gonna make such a massive impact in my life? Is it gonna solve my problem? Is it gonna fix the, the challenges that I've got? Like the core offer, like remember what we said here, right? The opt-in, the purpose of the opt-in is to identify and raise awareness of a problem. Remember what I said before about someone being shot? So the idea here is you don't tell them they've been shot. In, in the ad, what you want to do is you want to let them know that there's a problem and you want to give them morphine. All right, this is giving them morphine. This is telling them that they've been shot. This is taking out the bullet and giving them the body armor. Does that make sense? So if we're using that example that I used before, the idea here, like the whole purpose of this, is that you're building them up. What's next? Okay, so here's a problem. They're not aware. What's the solution? We're going to raise their awareness. Great, now they're aware. What's next? Okay, so now they need to trust us. Right, how do they do that? We give them a little bit of value so they can see results, instant results quickly for a little bit of money so they can trust us. Great, so now they trust us, what's next? Right, so now we need to fix the main problem. Okay, great, what's the main problem? And how do we fix it? And I, I, I question uh, what you said there, would 10 minutes of your time, regardless of what it costs, would 10 minutes of your time fix their core or their problem? Because if not, then you need to rethink what your core offer would be. A recorded voice test. See, a recorded voice test would be a great initial product offer. Like, go back to your customer avatar. Go back to where you started when we looked at who are you, who are you targeting, what is their problem? What is their problem and how can you help them? What is it that you're offering? Like, this is, what is the solution? What is the solution? So they've got a problem. What solution are you going to offer? Exactly, so it offers reassurance. So it comes here. But what I'm interested in today, we're talking about core offers. I want to know, what is your core offer? So for you, it could be, because I know you've got an English school, right? So you teach English, but you do it primarily for, um, I don't know what the age range is. What the age, what's the age range of the kids that you work with online? Because I know they're sort of at a younger age. Um, your core offer might be, I'm going to bundle all of my digital products together and you get access to everything. And it might be that this is like a subscription model. You might have a sub-model and you might have like lifetime access. And people get to choose whether they're going to pay like 99 a month or they're going to pay like 997 for lifetime access. Grade one to three. Look, I mean, at the end of the day, I've got a daughter myself. And if there's an ability that I know to give my daughter the next level of education or to help her learn quicker and learn better and learn faster and learn more, then like, it's hard to put a value on that because it's your child. People always pay more for their children and their animals and their pets than they will for themselves. And so already, like, and I'm not saying like, like, I'm not saying that you need to price yourself in that way, but the reality of it is that, you know, you, I've seen what you've got, right? You've got amazing online content. It's all open. You need to be charging for that. And so your core offer would, could be everything. All of your digital assets. The whole lot. And it could be that what you do is you offer that as your core offer. And your upsell is your time. Your one-time your one -time offer, your upsell is your one-on-one -on -one time. That you upsell on top of that. Like, here you go. Go and do it. Oh, by the way, if you need my help to take you through the process, I'm here. So that's just something to consider. But that's what I do. Like when I look at my IPO, when I look at my initial product offer, I've got my book. All right, I've got um, a mini course. I've got my workbook. I've got all the things that get people in so that they can plan their website. Once they planned it, they need to build it. All right, now that was my core offer, but now my core offer has changed. My build your website course is no longer my core offer because I've evolved, and that's why you need. This is why you need to be agile. Right? If I was so rigid, like plan, build, promote your website, this is all I'm doing. Done the plan, do the build, do the promote. If I was so rigid that that was all I offered, then I wouldn't be able to grow. And as a result, what's happened now, I love you too, man. I I'm glad you helped. Like, Dylan, I, I hope it helps. Because like, I'm just trying to, like, I'm trying to give you this so that you can apply it for yourself, right? Um, if you look at what my core offer is now, my core offer now is people get my book, my workbook, uh, they get my online course, my promote course, so they get all my digital content. Literally, lifetime access to everything that I've made that's digital, that doesn't involve my time. That I can say, I've created it, there you go. So lifetime access to that, plus. So my core offer was my Build Your Website course. It was one course. And as a result, I sold some. But as soon as I bundled 
all of my IPOs together into my core offer to make it a main core offer with everything. So now my IPOs, I've changed, I've had to rebuild new IPOs, little tiny courses, little mini courses, simple things, little tiny ways that I can get people in because now what happens is people will go through an ad, in the ad I'll tell them about one problem. That one problem I'll then give them a solution. Once they've got the solution, I'll give them the opportunity to opt in. The way that I opt, opt people in, and I'll give an example, I'll, I'll tell you my funnel and what I use, is I have an ad telling people the one thing, that there's, there's one reason why they're probably failing in their business and one thing they need to do. So when they come in, this isn't even an opt-in, this is before this. So up here, um, I hope you can see this, this is my ad talking about one thing. This comes through to a video. No opt-in, no name, no email address, nothing. This tells them that the problem they've got is their customer avatar. If, if they've got a problem with traffic or conversion, it is going to be because of their customer avatar. Because they haven't now done their customer avatar, and as a result, they're not communicating effectively. They haven't uh, identified the value. They haven't identified the problem. They haven't identified the solution. And so as a result, because of this, there'll be a disconnect. Now, what I do is once I've given them that value, just like a four or five minute video, right? Then I ask them to opt in. I'm saying, look, you need to go away and create your customer avatar. Go and do it. Here's some stuff to help you. Here's a blog post. Here's some videos. Oh, and by the way, if you want a worksheet that will take you through it, just give me your name and email address and you can have a worksheet that will help you create your customer avatar. So now I've opted them in and then I say to them, look, you've got to create your customer avatar. You've got to create a customer avatar. Would you like to do a mini course? I have a mini course. It's a seven step course that will teach you how to create your customer avatar. So now people can go through and create their customer avatar step by step using my course. That's my IPO. You see how it's tweaked? You see how I've changed it? You see how I've gone from selling my book as my IPO to now bundling my book in my core offer and doing the customer avatar as my IPO. And so by doing this, what I then do, this is where it gets a little bit clever. Shh, this is a secret. Don't tell anyone. On the IPO, I'm going to tell you this. This is a secret. Don't share this. I don't want you to share this with anyone. Don't share today's video, all right? This is just for you guys. I'm trying some reverse psychology on you now, seeing if that works. Now, this is what I do, right? And I, and I tell you guys because I love you guys because you're here. And because you come and watch me every day and I respect you, I want to help you. But this is the kind of stuff that I teach in my course. This, isn't the, this, what I'm about to give you now, is not the sort of stuff that I put out on Facebook Live. But what I've got is... I've got a course. You see that, all right? It's a seven step course, right? So they go through seven steps. And each one is a video, and each one they go through. Now, I offer a bonus. Right? This is strategy, what I'm teaching you right now. I offer a bonus. So, anyone that does my seven step course, they get an eighth step, which is a bonus. Guess what the bonus is? It links them into a free training. which is my webinar. This is a webinar. Now, I have people going from an ad directly into the webinar. I have people going from the opt-in directly into the webinar. I also have people from the opt-in going into the IPO and then through the IPO, which is this, because this is my video, this is my IPO. All right, it's my little course, it costs like, I think it's like 27 pounds now, because I keep adding to it and changing it. So what happens is they go through this, they get my seven steps, and then the eighth step here is a bonus, which puts them into a webinar. Guess what I do at the end of the webinar? I sell into my core offer. So people have come through this. They know, they like, they trust me. I'm adding value, I'm adding value. I'm helping them, I'm helping them, I'm helping them. I'm helping them. They've got their customer avatar. They get onto the webinar. Once they're on the webinar, I turn around and say, do you know what? Now you've got your, now you've got your avatar. You should have your avatar now. If you haven't, go back and check this out. But once you've got your avatar, that's great. Now you can start to drive traffic. What you need to work on now are your sales funnels. And so on the webinar, I talk about all this. I go through everything, connecting the avatar to the sales funnel and then plugging the systems in so that you can make money. And at the end of it, I say, and by the way, because this is what you should do on a webinar. Russell Brunson talks about this. It's really simple. There's a script. I don't have it to hand. But it's, you, you work on one thing. There's one problem. You, you think about one problem, all right? 
And then what you do is you stack value. So you offer a solution to the problem and then you add value. So what I do is I say, right, now in here you need to know how to plan. So you're going to get my book, you're going to get my workbook, you're going to get my build your website course, you're going to get my promote your website course, you're going to get six weeks master, six weekly mastermind sessions, you're going to get put into a private group and you're going to get unlimited access to me. I stack the value, stack the value, stack the value, stack the value. There's so much value there in that core offer that at the end of it people are just like, yeah, okay. Like this is just stupid, it's a no-brainer. Like I, I, I'd be crazy not to do this, right? And so that's what I do. And I, and I can add some scarcity in that. And it's real scarcity because like, when you're selling your core offer, the idea is not to... You don't want to put a timer on your website that says, like, there's nothing worse, right, than seeing this. There's nothing worse than coming to a website and seeing this. Tell me if you've seen this before and tell me if this annoys you. You come to a website, right, and you see this and it says... Price is going up when the timer hits zero, and it looks like that, and the price hasn't gone up. And someone said it to try and get some sales, or it counts down and it says, in six hours the price will go up, and you come back the next day and it says, in three hours the price will go up, and you come back two days later and it says, in 12 hours the price will go up. Really? Are you building that no like, and trust? Or are you just trying to convert more and increase your sales to a point where you're actually, whilst you may be making some more money, you're actually compromising on your integrity and your ethics. And the whole purpose of doing this, and the whole reason we're doing this, is to add value. All right, We're not doing it to try and scam people. This is not a get-rich-quick scheme. All right? This takes work, but this is a business. And if you want a sustainable, scalable business, you have to put in the work. You have to understand the strategy. Website developers don't teach you this shit. They don't know this stuff. This is stuff that is only just, only just, and we're talking in the last few years, starting to become mainstream. Like people have known about this for a long, long time, but it's just people didn't talk about it. And now because of like the, um, the ever increasing digital courses and you know, intellectual property being so valuable, everyone is just trying to productize that shit out of themselves. So now everyone's talking about this. But this has been around for a long time, and of course you can tweak it and change it and adapt it to your business model, but there will never be a better time to implement this than right now. Not in six months' time, not in a year's time, not three years ago, right now. Like if you're watching this right now, you're plugged into the internet, if you have a business idea, no matter what it is, if you have the ability to solve a problem, then it is very very simple to create this structure and this system. In fact, you can get go to clickfunnels.uk, sign up for a two-week account, you can build all this in about five minutes. All you need to do is put your copy in and your content and test it, and test it for two weeks and see if it works. And when someone buys it, then build it. All you need to be is one step ahead in your core offer. In my six-week course, I can tell you right now, I am still writing the material for the second half of the course. Because I wanted to get people signed up to it. As soon as I sold out and I was like, everyone signed up, I'm like, great, now I need to build out the content because I know people want it. That's why I signed up in advance. That's why it's like it's not starting until the 1st of March. Because now, module one's gone out to everyone. Everyone's got it. And so everyone's working through it. And so we've got calls and I'm, I'm available now apart from my Facebook Lives, that's it. The only thing I'm doing now for the next six weeks is focusing on my tribe. Focusing on the people that I'm working with to make sure they get results. And then you'll, you'll know about it because we'll be posting about it. I'll be telling you as they're getting their results. They'll be singing my praises because that's what I'm doing. We're, we're implementing all of this on an individual person by person basis. Because it's all good me giving you this generic information but you need to apply it to yourself. So my question is, how are you going to use this? What is your core offer? What is your main product that you're going to offer? How can you stack the value to make it so desirable that people want it? And then tomorrow, we'll talk about one-time offers and upsells. Make sense? One problem and then you stack value. I like how you frame that. That's what it is. One, your core offer should solve one problem. That's it. You don't want to be doing too much. You don't want to be doing too many different things. There's, like You can have different core offers, that's fine. Like You can have different businesses, you can have different models, but you should be focusing on one area. You can expand on that, you can change it, you can bolt other things onto that. But at the moment, this core... Because once you've built this, once, once this is done, you can literally replicate it again with a different model, with a different thing. 
Like, what's next? So we built out this sales funnel, great. Let's build another sales funnel. What's like in the next stage of the journey, once they've got from this? So it could be like, Russell Brunson is great and so are you, Steve. Thank you, I really appreciate that. Although, to be fair, I think Russell's, he's a bit bigger than me, he's bigger built, but I'm definitely better looking. But he knows his stuff. Yeah, Russell Brunson's amazing, great guy. And he's just done his Funnel Hacker Live, which was a phenomenal event. I've ordered a note, so I'm looking forward to that because unfortunately I couldn't be there. Um, but yeah, great guy. I love Russell. I was talking to him recently and, you know, he, he, he's, he's, a, he's a really good guy. Really, really respect him. Um, but it, this is what he talks about. And this is his expertise. And I've learned a lot from him and I've learned a lot from myself. And I've seen what other people do. And there's stuff that I like and stuff that I don't. I'm all about making it ethical, I'm all about making it scalable, and I'm all about you actually using this for yourself in your business to do what you need to do. So, if you've got any questions, please let me know. Consider the process, I mean, we, I'm going to keep banging on about this, I'm, not, I'm going to keep going about the same thing until people get it. Like, we're going through it step by step, right? All of this is in the book, you're more than welcome, if you haven't got it already, planyourwebsite.co.uk, or go on Amazon, plan your website. I'm literally walk, walking you through the book. That's what we're doing right now. Like, we're on chapter two. We're talking about the customer journey. Everything I'm doing now, as you can see, whoa. See if I can zoom that in. See? Customer relationships, marketing, conversions. It's all there. All of this stuff that I'm talking to you about. So the idea is that you go through this. Look, even with this, this is based off of, um, this is Ryan Dice. This is The Invisible Selling Machine. There's a great book called The Invisible Selling Machine. Now, I don't copy his um, style because hey, it's nice and it works and I get it, but I've got my own style that I do, so I'm not about these uh, generic messages that go out to warm people up. I like to make them more personable. I like to change them up a bit. I'm not saying, like, what he's got, he's got a digital market is a fantastic company. You know, it works, but it's internet marketing. And so one of the things I always do is I always look, and this is another thing in a book here, I always look at the journey. You know, what are you doing? How are you guiding people? One of the things I talk about here in my book, and I, I, I reference golf. I don't know why, because I don't play it. It was just a good example. By the way, do you like the illustrations? Mohit did these. So, a gentleman called Mohit. Um, I'll actually tag him in the comments, so you can, uh, you can contact him. He does all my infographics, all my design work. I think they're pretty cool. Um, I love what he's done. He was amazing. Put them all together. I would literally give him a napkin, uh, and, and I would just scribble a stick man on a napkin, and then he would make it look really good. But I talk about the, the um, here... And by the way, I wrote this book like a couple of years ago now. So this is stuff like from a couple of years ago that is still relevant right now. See, the reason that I wrote this book the way that I did, this doesn't talk about WordPress. This doesn't talk about click funnels. This doesn't talk about technology because the moment I talk about that in this book, this book's out of date. This talks about strategy. This talks about the things that you need to know on a strategic level that you can then go and apply using different systems, using different things like that. But this talks about... 10 golf secrets. So this could be, do you want to improve your game? Yes or no? Great. Are you interested in driving or putting? Because what we're doing is we're segmenting people. And that's the whole purpose of this process, is we segment people. Are you interested in this? Are you interested in that? Like a great example of this, if you look at, and I just talk about this, if you look at my brochure that I've got, the first thing I do is I say to people, do you want to plan, build, or promote your website? Okay, so you want to plan your website. Do you want to read the book, attend a live workshop, or do a consultation? Now, this is segmenting. Do you, do you have money and no time, or do you have time and no money? Because this is a budget question. Cheap, medium, expensive. That's it. Do it yourself. Do it in a group. Do it. I'll do it. And the whole purpose is you get the workbook. Once you've got that, we then take you through to the next stage. Do you want to do, want to do your course? Do you want to do pre-built templates? Have it done for you? You know, do you want to come? There's now I've got to redo this because obviously now I've got the six-week course as well. But the purpose of this is it's to segment people. What? Where are you? You know, are you trying to focus on traffic or are you trying to focus on conversions? You know, what industry are you and what things do you need? Do you need templates? Do you need design? Do you need development? Like, what are the things that you need in your business to get you to the next level? And I segment people based on where they are and what they're doing. And I've showed you all this. You can go back through previous videos. When you look at my CRM system, I, have, I know exactly where everyone is in the process and I can follow up with them. So I think automating it to a degree, because you need to be scalable, right? You need, like, I can jump in and out at any point. Like, I can say, oh, hi, I see you're doing this course. How are you finding it? And I can send a personal message. But I know that if I get busy, 
dealing with other stuff. Like, let's just say I have a client who has a meltdown and I've got three problems and then I'm, you know, I've been invited to a wedding and then I've, a, a family issues come up and all of a sudden, do you know what I mean? I've got to go and get my hair cut because, like, there's so much going on. And I, I don't have the time and I forget to message that person because I'm busy. Then I know that there are systems in place. I know that here they're going to get a series of emails. They're going to be nurtured. Okay, I know they're going to get those. And so the ability of having these systems, the ability of automating this process is so that you have the ability to work on your business and not in it. You should be able to choose whether or not you want to jump in or out. It is a choice. It shouldn't be a necessity. You should have systems in place that are you, that you have created, that you've put in place to help you that allow you to step back, to look at the bigger picture and say, hmm, actually, looking at this, I think we could change this here. And actually, now I'm looking at it, because this is the next step. Like, what I'm doing this week, in week one of my course, week one of my course, I am going through numbers. It's all about numbers. It's about business viability. That's exactly what I'm teaching and what I'm doing at the moment. And so what I want to look at is, right, let's have a look here at how many people you need. Right, I need 10 people a month, let's just say. I'm going to use a different colour. So let's just say you need 10 people a month um, in your core offer. Great. Now, I'm going to estimate that we're going to get a 20% conversion from the initial product offer into the core offer, which means that I now know I need 50 people in my IPO. Now, I know I'm going to get a 10% conversion from my opt-in to my IPO. I mean, I'm just giving you numbers here. This, don't take this as gospel. This is just an example. So I now know that I need 500 people to opt-in. Okay? So now I know I need 500 people to opt-in so that I can convert 10% to get 50 people on my IPO so I can convert 20% so that 10 people take my core offer. And now I know I'm gonna, I'm, I've got enough money for my business and for me to live for the month. Um, to pay my staff and to do all the things I need to do. Because like my staff take more money than I do. I, I can tell you that now. My, my lead developer, he, you know, he's expensive, but he's bloody good. Really good. You know, he's, he's doing some amazing stuff at the moment. Um, I think that the reality of it is that as I start to grow and as I start to expand and I have more costs, I have to start looking at how I can tweak this because it's not just about me anymore. Right? This is about the team that I've got working with me and them and how I can help them to do what they want to do, how I can do what I need to do to help the customers so that my clients, my tribe, they get their outcome, so that my staff get paid, my tribe get their outcome. And so there's a lot of pressure to make this work. And I can't always jump in and out. Like I have to make sure that I have systems in place so that if I'm there, great, I can be there, I can personalise the experience. And I do. I make sure that the majority of my emails that go out to people, those emails are personalised, they're from me. But I know that if I'm busy and I can't and I have to step back, I know that the system's there to take care of it. So I hope that helps. I hope that's been some value. I hope that's given you something to consider with your core offer. Remember, all of this, these early stages, this should be automated and scalable. All of this stuff here can be more of your time. All of this stuff here can be more high-end, it can cost more, it can involve more of your time, more of your energy. But the initial stuff here, this is a filtration system. This is purely taking muddy water and cleaning it up. And so what you need to do is you need to understand that the people that are coming through this process are right for you and all you're doing is filtering out those that are good against those that are not. Because you shouldn't be trying to work with everyone. You shouldn't. It's just... It's not right to try and work with everyone. You should pick a target, pick a niche, pick an industry, pick some people within that ideal client and you should filter out. The whole idea of this is a vetting process to find your ideal client. So they buy your core offer. I'll see you tomorrow, 12 o'clock. I'm going to go now and um, continue with the course and the tribe and getting everything going there. I'm excited. I'm going to jump on some calls with that. Uh, take my daughter swimming and then tomorrow I will be back midday and we will talking about OTO, one-time offers and upsells. All right, and we're going to wrap the whole thing up on Friday. We're going to go through the sales funnel one more time from start to finish. And then next week, we're going to jump into another section. Now, I'm curious just before I leave. And by the way, if this has been valuable, if you've enjoyed this, please tag anyone below. I'm trying to keep it to about half an hour. And I've slightly gone over, but pretty good like in terms of time. Uh, if, if this is valuable, please tag people below if you think that they should like if the, if you think they should see this. Um, I really appreciate that. Obviously, I'm always grateful if you're liking it. Thanks for all the hearts and all the all the thumbs up. I love it. I love it because it makes me think that like you're listening. You know, it's not just like this. Isn't just about me telling you something. Can you go? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Oh, you need to go and implement this. 
you, you absolutely need to go and say, do you know what, I'm, I'm just going to take, you, you should block out an hour of your time, right, if I, if I can, if I'll make a promise to you, if I can try and keep these to 30 minutes, and you can promise to block out an hour, then do 30 minutes of listening to me ramble, and then do 30 minutes of reflecting on what I've said, and applying that into your business, because next week, I want to look at content, I do not want to spend a whole week going through content, um, sorry, no, sitemaps, sorry, sitemaps and wireframes, now, I mean, I don't want to spend a week on sitemaps. I can do it in a day. And I, so I don't, I don't feel like there's any need to pad that out. So next week, I'm going to go through sitemaps, wireframes, and I'm going to try and push through and see if we can do this. Because I said we'd do a chapter a week, but the reality is that like, why, we don't need to spend 10 weeks on this book. We don't need to. We can do it a lot quicker. I'd rather do that and find out what you guys want to hear. So tell me what you want to know, and I'll make sure the content is aimed at you guys. If there's anything on here that you want me to focus on, let me know in the comments, and I'll make sure that tomorrow and Friday we focus on that so that you're crystal clear. So like Rhett, for example, if it's your core offer and you want help with that, let me know and we'll work on it. We'll do, like I'm here, you've got me, use me. All right, this is my time to give back, to give you whatever I can. You don't have to pay for it. It's completely complimentary in a way of me giving you my ideas so that they're not wasted and so that I can get all this stuff out of my head and you can use it and apply it. I follow you because I believe in people. Thank you. I appreciate that. Most people follow me because I've got a nice ass, but no, if it's because you believe in people. That's a great reason. Have a great guy, day, guys. Uh, I really appreciate you all. Thank you very, very much, and I will see you all tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.